they're controlling the uh, the arm bar now, so we don't want to lose the, the elbow. Um, so there's two common ways that people will get out of the arm. Um, there's two ways we'll often uh, lose the arm bar. So once we get around, we swing our leg over the top. The most common way is that the elbow will slip here like this. Okay? When the elbow slips, no matter how strong you are, you're not going to finish the, the arm bar now. You need to have the elbow yeah, on top of the hips. Okay? And the other way that people will often get out is that they'll stack. So they'll get up on top and they pressure you. And then they will escape their elbow there, but once they pressure me like that, it's hard for me to, um, to extend and finish. So, um, to stop the elbow from slipping, we want to be really good. Well, we, we want to be really good at controlling the armbar. Think of it as a position. If you can hold the armbar position for 10 minutes, uh, you will finish an armbar during that time. If you can only hold it for 10 seconds, it's probably unlikely that you're any good at finishing armbars because they're, they're going to get out of it. Okay, so you want to be able to hold the position for a long time. So we can't let them escape. Have a look at the way Kader moves his shoulders when he wants to escape his elbow. Okay, so. He's going to move his shoulders away. See that? He has to actually shift his head moves away and his shoulders moves away and they turn in to face me. So all I want to do is stop the shoulders from moving away. My left leg is going to curl back on the, the neck here and pull his head close to my hips. And my right foot, hooking under the armpit, is going to pull his shoulders close to me as well. So now free your arm cater. Just using my legs, I can hold the, the position pretty strong. Um, all right, and so the other thing he might do is he might try to uh, bridge up on top. Now, when he wants to get up on top, usually this leg has to come out from behind him. Okay, so get up. See, so that leg has to come out behind. If I hold on to this leg, this near leg, like this, okay, I'm trying to get up. Keep that leg close to me, you can't actually get up. So we can eliminate potentially both of those ways of escaping by either grabbing the leg or curling our feet. There's a few other things we can go through, which we'll go in over in a moment. But for the first drill, uh, what I want you to do, curl with your feet really tight, and Kate is going to try and get out. So he's going to try and get out, I've got to hold it as long as I can. Like this, he's going to try and free his arm. If he starts getting on top, grab the leg and keep him down. I'll keep him from yeah, keep him from getting up, and then go back, try and free your arm. We're just going to do this. Okay, we're going to do one minute each of that. Make sure you're pulling back with your feet. It's not a, a pinch your knees together. You can. Some people like to cross their feet, which is okay. I feel like it's better if you pull the, the head in closer. But uh, crossing your feet is okay if you're curling. You never want to cross your feet and try and squeeze. This isn't going to last for very long. Free your arm. Yeah. So we're not trying to hold the arm like this, we're holding it by curling back to wood. Alright, let's have a go. Three, two, one. Let's go over a little bit more about the not getting stacked part. Um, so, I mean, stopping and freeing the elbow. We've got this. The other thing we've got, this is just with our legs, but if your legs can do the work, it means your hands can actually do other things, start trying to break grips. Uh, but you can, and it, it is good as well, if they're holding their own arm, which they usually do, then you can reach around, and this like kind of wedges and, and holds the, the elbow up anyway. So even without my legs, if he keeps his elbows together and tries to free his elbow, this can be difficult if I've got this wedge pulling up like that. Uh, if he lifts this forward, that's different, but then I can take the arm. Okay. Well, so this is going to assist, but focusing now on stopping them getting on top. There's a few, there's actually a few things. We, we went over the, the leg grip as one of them. Um, the way I definitely, that I don't like to occur, like like to happen, is if actually if Kata bridges me this way, so do a big bridge, yeah, and he gets up this way. Because often the elbow is going to free there as well. There's like a good chance they free the elbow if you try and go for the arm. So I really don't like to get taken onto my left side. So one of the first things I'll do, I'll reach my left hand through, so the hand is close to the head. I'll grip as high as I can on the thigh here. Post on the mat, I'm still curling with my feet here my foot on the mat and I scoop my hips further onto my right side. So now because I'm leaning to my right and my hips higher towards the head, you've got to like pull me over the, all the way over to get me on my left hip. So it's going to be more difficult for him to do that. And if he starts to get somewhere near there, I push, there we go, and push, 
and the just. Okay? So I always want to stay more on my right knee. Okay? It does mean that he's more likely to try and get up this way, but I feel like that's easier to, to counter if it, if it starts to do that. Okay? So again, first thing, for this, we post on the mat, we move our hips closer to the head, and we sit on our right hip like this. I'm still curling with my feet, so if he tries to escape the arm, he's still trapped. Okay? So I've still got very good control here. Okay. Now, we can grab the leg, but another thing we can do, if he starts to sit forward, you can, instead of curling now, I can actually just start to kick a little bit, like a stomp. So I'm actually using like the, like I'm doing that. So I'm using my hamstring to kick him back down. So try and get up better. Okay, I can get him back down, and then we go back to curling to control the, uh, try and sit up again. Kick him back down, and, and we go again, okay? Obviously, I can grab the leg, so go again. Grab the leg, and we can stop him from escaping. And lastly, if he does get up, this is what I have to do, okay? I don't want to get stacked like this. This is no good. If we go back, I'm going to spin my head underneath his legs. So as we go up, I'm going to reach my hand here to his far leg. I'm going to look the opposite way to what you think. So I'm going to put my head through this way, my head's going through here, and I'm actually going to look away. Like this. Okay. You can finish the arm by here, but the main thing is you're not getting stacked. Okay, so now I no longer have that weight on me from here. Hey, that's just being a good training partner, he's going to roll back over, and we're back to our starting position. Okay, so he's going to try and get up. I don't know, obviously, I tip out to this side. Okay, he tries to get up. I stop him with my leg. I stop him by grabbing his leg, and now I'm going to let him get up. But I'm going to reach to here, the far leg, lift my hips, look away, and roll through. And we maintain control of the armbar the whole time. Just with that, you need space, okay? So, so now get up here. If you wait till they get up, sometimes they put their knees really close to your head. Like here is going to be hard to spin underneath, right? So what I need to do is like push my hips away a bit. Have that gap now, okay? When I push away, using a bit of a gap, reach under the leg, and then I can start to curl. Sometimes even push that leg for a moment, like this. You can help yourself through, okay? And then the, your partner's gonna jump over, follow up, we're back into the armor, okay? So let's try that. Person, we're just maintaining control. Person's gonna try to get up a bunch of different ways, and you're just gonna react to each of those ways. Let them come up sometimes and spin through. Now let's go over finishing. So hopefully you've got a good idea of how to control the position. Um, in terms of finishing the armbar, I tend to think of two different grip types. There's one like what um, Koi's doing now where he's gripping his own hand and he can, some people do it like that, some people grab their own fingers, like there's a bunch of variants for that. To me that doesn't really matter. We can deal with that from here. Um, and the other way that they'll often grip is like a body triangle, like sorry, an arm triangle um, sort of grip. Okay? Sometimes they reach under the leg, sometimes they grab your own elbow, sometimes they grab their own elbow. Regardless, I tend to approach them in the same way. Okay, so we'll first go over this one, which is very common. This is less strong, okay? So he's generally uh, stronger if he grabs the, gets this one. So even if I'm really strong, it's hard for me to pull his arm free from this. If we're both pretty even, or if I'm a little stronger than um, Cater, I might be able to actually just like out bicep curling here, but that's not what we want to do. We want to do it a better way. So we're just gonna we're gonna try and attach our chest to the wrist. Right now, if I do like this, it's my hands against Cater's hands. Who's stronger? Whereas if I get my chest to the wrist, like this, now it's like my back extension against his his biceps, which is gonna be um, more in my favor. And actually, it won't even be against his bicep because we're gonna go not this way, which is pretty strong with but this way, which is more against his shoulder rotation, which he's not so strong with. So I'm gonna get my, my hand here, and attach the arm to my chest, and I'm gonna to roll to the side using my, my core against his arms. Once we're here, it'll break, okay? So to get this wrist, I need to make sure the elbow's not in the way. If the elbow's in front of me, I can't get my chest to the wrist like that. So I have to move the elbow out of the way. Kind of shimmy my chest to the side as I pull the arm to the side with my other hand. Chest comes forward, and then my outside hand will lock the, the wrist to my chest. Okay. 
once we're there, we do like a rear naked choke grip over the top. Has to be at the wrist, guys. I've taught this and sometimes people, are, they go like this. Okay, how much leverage do I have to pry his arm for it? Very little, I'm not, the end of the lead is here. I'm right where the fulcrum is, so there's no leverage there. I need to be at the wrist. Okay. Now that we're here, fall to the side. Arm opens and we'll finish. Okay. And you can do the exact same the other way. If for some reason you can't get the elbow this side, I can get the elbow this side, chest to the wrist, and we fall to this side now. Okay. You see how, whichever side the elbow is on, I rotate the wrist the other way, because that puts pressure on the shoulder. And we don't want to go here and then go that way, because that's not too, too bad for us. All right, so that's it, they're holding like this. We're gonna try and get our chest to the wrist. If they do the arm triangle ones, it's a little different. What I'm gonna do, I, first of all, get your hand as high up as possible on your thigh. That will already start to put some pressure on Kater's arms. You can probably feel I'm starting to pull his hand out from, from that position. Then, once it's as high as possible, we do our move to the side and I lean to the side. So Kater can probably feel the, the tension comes on the arms here. With enough tension that you can see it actually lifts his head off the ground. And that's what I'm going to use that same kick that we did before to put more pressure on his arm. Yeah. Okay. And often that's enough to make it slip. Yeah. So again, we get here, yeah, pull him up, and then I kick back with my leg like that. If they're still holding on, the last little thing you have to do, push on the elbow, the, the hand will become available. And then grab the hand, both hands, and we pull back to finish. So again, here, high as possible on the thigh, scoot out to the side, ball to lift the head up, chop, hit, go back and finish. Any questions? Work both of them. Three, two, one.